Hey everyone, welcome back to the Frugal Kitchen. This delicious dessert recipe comes from the ConsciousPlantKitchen.com and it is gluten free, vegan, and really easy to make. My version has peanut butter. You can use um, sunflower butter, was another substitute. I don't know if peanut butter is vegan or not. Um, I'm not vegan, I just like to eat lower cholesterol, which means a lot of vegan ingredients. So the first thing we're going to do is make some oat flour. Um, it calls for a third cup of almond flour or oat flour. And I don't have almond flour, but I do have oats because um, I like, I prefer oats to um, a lot of other gluten-free. Well, I know oats aren't really always gluten-free, but I prefer it and chickpea flour to a lot of other options because of price. That's my real driving factor when determining what I'm going to cook. I need things to be relatively cheap ingredients. So I threw it in the food processor and it turned into flour. And that's one of my favorite things about oatmeal. So this recipe and my earlier pinto bean brownie recipe both use cooked beans. So I'm using a drained can of chickpeas for this. You can make chickpeas from scratch. There's a green one. I don't know why I wanted to show you that. Um, and then you have to dry them as well because if they're too wet, they don't form the right shape and they just kind of fall apart and then you're eating it with a spoon, basically. Um, I, I'm looking for recipes for like brownies and blondies and things that involve bean flour. So you take the dried beans and you grind them up in the Vitamix and then you use the flour. Um, all the recipes I've found that are good so far use cooked beans. So it's just a little bit more, um, not annoying, but it's like I like having the basic ingredients here, not having to worry about cooking beans for two hours, soaking them overnight but the day before, or keeping a can lying around. So um, this recipe does use cooked beans, and I think that makes it taste better, but I am looking for recipes where you use bean flour. So we're going to add peanut butter um, to the bowl here, and it's calling for a third cup of peanut butter. For some reason, the recipe specifies unsalted. I've never noticed if peanut butter has salt or not. I mean, regular butter, yes, that, that's on the label, but not peanut butter from what I've noticed and then I fortunately had an extra jar of peanut butter I think when I grabbed it out of the pantry I was like oh no there's only a little bit left and um, I'm not sure if I was if I made this over the weekend when my husband was home but he might have said I I bought some don't worry he's very good at making sure we don't run out of peanut butter so um, this particular part of the recipe, I'm throwing everything in the stand mixer, but that didn't work out so well. So uh, if you're following along exactly as you're making it at this point, you would probably want to put your beans in a food processor or a blender and really grind them up, and then you can mix the softer ingredients with them. So I got excited about being the first person to use the peanut butter in the jar, and I don't know if you have that same feeling, but uh, <laughs> I was putting my spoon into the perfectly level peanut butter. I was just like, oh yeah, brand new peanut butter. Who else loves that? So this little measuring cup thing is very useful for um, if you have sticky ingredients or very liquid ingredients. I typically use it for peanut butter, honey, molasses, that kind of thing to make sure that the exact measurement is going into my bowl. Um, as you can see, it doesn't leave like a residue on the side. Like when you push the little plunger in, it kind of, it takes the whole thing. Like all of it goes in. There's no there's a good seal on it, so there's no like leaking of the ingredients. And I tried using a spoon for the molasses, but then I said, oh, shoot, I'll just pour it. And um, this does call for half a cup of maple syrup, which I don't have, which is why I used molasses. I could have used honey, but that wouldn't have made it vegan. And I did want to give you a substitute that was vegan so you could get 
an idea for taste. Um, I would probably use something that's not as flavorful, not as strong in the future, because this was heavily molasses flavored. Then throw in half a teaspoon of sea salt. And half a teaspoon of almond, or sorry, vanilla extract. I was, I said almond because I was reading the um, ingredients and I think if you have almond extract and you used almond flour, I would maybe replace the vanilla with the almond extract. Oh, it's actually not half a teaspoon. It is one and a half teaspoons. The recipe says to use half a tablespoon, which is weird. Then you're going to do a quarter cup of baking powder, a quarter cup of baking soda. I remember looking it up and going, excuse me, nobody has half a tablespoon in their, like, spoon measuring things. So that was, I don't like measurements like that. Like, the recipe should tell me the quantity that comes with my spoons. I wouldn't tell you to use, like, five-eighths cup of something. That's, that's silly. So, and then I tried mixing it all together, and at this point I realized, oh, this paddle mixer isn't as strong as I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was going to smash the beans up. Um, so I stopped, and I poured it into the food processor, and it's so funny, when I pulled it out and I smelled the peanut butter, and I saw the round little chickpeas, I thought, boy, this looks a lot like that cereal I used to eat all the time, the Reese's cereal. I don't know even know if they still make it, because I don't eat cereal anymore. But if they do, does that not look like Reese's cereal to you? It does to me, and it smelled like it. It just needed chocolate, but chocolate's coming later. I don't know if you have a food processor, but this one actually was my husband's before we met, which was eight years ago now. And I feel like I can't go back to not having a food processor because I use it so, so much. And um, I don't know, maybe it's part of, I don't even know why. Well, what I used to use it mostly was for making salsa. I feel like the reason I use it a lot is because I make a lot of things I used to just buy from the grocery store, like salsa, like flour. I mean, I don't use regular wheat flour as much as I used to. I'm making my own flours a lot, so I'm using this food processor all the time. It is a cuisine art, and it's a workhorse, and I kept thinking I would need to replace the blades because sometimes things don't blend as much as I expected. Well, they just don't blend as much as the Vitamix blends them, which makes sense. The Vitamix is a stronger device. This is a three cup, if I'm not mistaken, um, Cuisine Art food processor, and it's really great. I have not had to replace the blade yet. I do have it bookmarked somewhere, like the parts online. I have it bookmarked in case I do need to replace the blade, but so far it hasn't really needed to happen. And I, I'm, I'm not saying this because they're paying me, obviously. I don't have enough subscribers for anyone to pay me to do anything. I'm just telling you because I love this thing, and if my husband and I got divorced and he kept the food processor in the divorce, which I would probably fight for, I would buy my own because that's how much I love it. I'd be like, oh, I don't care, like, whatever it costs, this is a great food processor. So once the chickpeas were smashed up to a, a level I thought was appropriate, I put them back in the stand mixer so that I could continue to mix the rest of the ingredients because, as you may recall, there is oat flour coming soon and there's, there's a few more ingredients to put in. Oh, there's the oat flour. So add the oat flour, turn on your stand mixer, or you can throw this in a bowl too. I also didn't have a stand mixer before I met him. This is his. All the really cool small appliances that we own are his that he owned before we met, which again was eight years ago. So these things are, um, I feel like buy it for life quality, the ones he's gotten. Um, and for the most part, he, I know these things are expensive. He did buy these like on eBay and I believe he bought the bowl and the mixer separately because that was cheaper. So that is what it looks like when it's all mixed up. This is the flour, the beans, the molasses or maple syrup and vanilla and salt. So I'm going to prepare the baking dish. I believe the 
recipe actually said to use um, a nine by nine, which is normal. This is eight by eight, which I didn't even realize like until I made this. I was like, why is our why is our baking dish smaller than all the recipes say? So whatever, it, I've never noticed the difference. The only difference is your brownies are taller, which I feel is a quality you want to have in your brownies. So now we're taking a third cup of chocolate chips. Uh, mine are sugar free, they're not vegan, but obviously the recipe says you should be using vegan ones if you um, are following that diet. And, and then from the third cup, you'll see here, we're reserving three tablespoons. And that is because the recipe creator thought that it would be better to put some chocolate chips on the top. And it was fine. I don't think it's necessary. Like, who cares? Like, if there's any on the top, it didn't matter that much. I think they, they thought that it would make it too chocolatey if you had all of them inside. I did put them on the top, but I feel like I wish I could have patted them down, and I didn't. And if you pat them down, that might make them not fall off when they're finished cooking. So throw in your chocolate chips, and then you can add it to the pan, the 9x9 nine nine pan. So then take a spatula and get all the dough, or whatever you would call it, I guess it's not really dough, the food out of your stand mixer or your bowl, and then spread it out and try to make it as level as you can. Um, and again, just don't forget to do um, either parchment paper, which I think is what was suggested in the recipe, but I thought that was a little extreme, or nonstick spray in your pan. So now I'm adding the three tablespoons of chocolate chips on top, and I did not pat them down because it wasn't mentioned in the recipe, but I should have patted them down a little bit because they did kind of fall off when I was finished cooking it. Um, the reason the recipe writer wants you to put the chocolate chips on top was because they said that it would be too chocolatey if you put all of them inside, but I didn't find that my chocolate chips melted all the way. Maybe it's because mine weren't vegan. Mine are made with a fake sugar, and fake sugar does not have the same properties as real sugar. So perhaps if you are using real sugar, that they would spread and melt a lot. But is that a problem? Like, like you're putting chocolate in it. Does it matter if it's too much? There's no such thing, really. I think it's too much chocolate. Then you bake it at 350 for 20 to 30 minutes, and I did 25, as you can see. And it was perfect when it came out. It was darker than the photos on the website showed, and I am guessing that is because I used molasses instead of, you know, pale, what was it? M maple syrup. And then they want you to stick a toothpick in until, um, you know, everything looks like it's set. The toothpick is to make sure that it uh, doesn't have very many crumbs. That is when they said it is done. And then you cool it for 10 minutes in the pan. Um, and then it said to move it to a cooling rack and then slice it into bars, which I guess you would only do if you um, had made had put parchment paper down. I didn't find it necessary. I let it cool for an hour. And this is what the result was after an hour. And that is the thing with bean brownies that is not a problem with flour is that you pretty much have to let them get all the way cool before you can eat them because they will fall apart and smush in your hands. So this is what it looked like when it was done and cool and ready to eat, and I was really pleased with the results. It did taste good. It tasted sweet. I mean, there's no refined sugar, so it's, uh, but it has actually, you know, food, natural food that's sugared, so that's always a plus in making things sweet yet healthy and um, I really enjoyed it and I think it was a great recipe I would try this with honey next time since I'm not vegan um, just because the molasses flavor was a little overpowering compared to 
the chocolate flavor even, and that was what I was expecting to taste more. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and go ahead, like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and happy eating, everyone.